Welcome back to another video in this guitar building basics set of videos where I take one specific piece of building a guitar and we talk just a little bit more about it. Today, fret marker dots. Check it out. The first thing you really should decide for your fret marker dots is really when you're going to install them. Are you going to wait till your fretboard is glued on or are you going to try to do it before you glue the fretboard onto the neck? Now me personally, I like to do it after it's glued onto the neck and the fretboard is shaped to the neck. That way I can lay it out exactly, exactly in the center line and I don't have to worry about there being any variations once I glue that fretboard on. In fact, that would be my recommendation would be to do it after you glue the fretboard on. Plus the fretboard gives you a nice solid surface so that you can index it flat on your drill press and drill everything nice and straight. But before you can drill everything, you've got to know exactly what size material you're gonna use and we've got to lay it out in just the right spot. The first thing you want to do is establish a good center line on your fretboard. Now I can begin laying out where the markers are going to go. I do this by connecting the diagonals of my fret slots and this center point should land on the center line of the neck. If one happens to be off just a teensy bit, most likely, visually, you won't even be able to tell. Now up until now, the center line is not necessarily required because as you're making an X, your points are going to be centered. But when you come to the 12th fret, you're going to use that center line and we're going to draw two X's, which will give us two locations for our double dots. I want to point out I'm also using a mechanical pencil. It gives me a much finer line and I feel a little bit more accuracy. There we go. Got all of our locations marked out. Now using this little tool which is very similar to kind of a dental pick. It's basically a kind of an awl and a very fine sharp point. I'm going to go down through and mark right on those crosshairs. I like to do this before I use a center punch because this gives me a little bit finer point and again, I feel more accurate. I always double check my counts before I start marking that 12th fret just in case maybe I'm off and I can still save the fretboard before I go poking it full of holes. And now just using a little bit larger center punch, I'll go back down the fretboard and remark those holes. This will make them just a little bit wider so the drill bit can find the center. When you're lining it up, you can feel the point of this punch grab in that little starter hole and you know you're in the right spot. You just want to hold it securely so that if you tap it more than one time, it doesn't bounce into another spot right as you're tapping it. I've done that before and then you got a little divot that you need to fill. So now on the drill press, I've got a quarter inch Forstner bit. Now you don't have to use a quarter inch. That's just the size that I would like to use. So now I can begin drilling the holes for the dots. I have the depth stop on the drill press set so that I can't drill all the way through the fretboard. You want to make sure you drill these deep enough so that when you radius the fretboard, you don't lose your dots at the 12th fret. Some people will drill the 12th fret just a little bit deeper. I base my settings on where I need to be at the 12th fret and drill everything the same. Then I don't have to worry about changing my measurements. Save those. I'm serious when I say save those shavings. You never know if you're going to get a chip or a nick of some sort in your fretboard or in the body or whatever you might be working on. I just take the shavings, I write on there with a sharpie what kind of wood it is and you can just throw this in a drawer. You may never need it, but if you do, you'll have it. it may save your hide. Now let's say you drill the hole and it's clearly not centered one way or another. How do we fix that? 
Depending on the material, you may be able to plug it with a scrap of the same material and get away with it that way. There's a slight chance you may see the repair, but depending on the size of the error, you may be able to get away with it. If I was going to do this myself, I would probably just use epoxy, let it level itself out, sand it flat, remark it, and drill it with the next size up drill bit or whatever size I would need to go to to hide the mistake. Before I put any glue in those holes, I'm gonna lightly sand it to remove any nubs. Now it's at this point where if you were using some sort of other material, a plug or some store-bought pre-made inlays, this is where you would apply your glue and put those markers in place. The process is exactly the same as what it's gonna be for this epoxy. It's just how you glue your material in. Make sure that you use the recommended adhesive. Some of those inlays actually call for an epoxy. Some are okay using a wood glue. So just make sure you're using the adhesive that's recommended for whatever the inlay is you're using. For my marker dots, I'm gonna use colored two-part epoxy. The fun thing about epoxy is you have a ton of colors available to you and you can make it match whatever color scheme you need. Now just to drizzle that epoxy into those holes. And now I can hit that epoxy lightly with a blowtorch just to remove the air bubbles. Since this is such a small space, it doesn't take much for the bubbles to come to the surface. After letting the epoxy cure overnight, I can now radius the fretboard like I normally would. Once we have everything leveled out, now we have some nice colored epoxy dots for our fret markers. That's gonna be cool. I'll sand that up to about 600 or maybe even 800. Let's start giving it a nice glossy look. It'll turn out really well. Let's say you didn't wanna use epoxy. What other kind of options do you have? First, you could make your own. You could start off using a little plug cutter and cut your own wooden plugs using some sort of a contrasting wood. That actually works really well. Here is a neck that I've done that has some light colored wood on top of this darker wood. I think it looks really good. So you could definitely make your own wooden ones using a simple plug cutter. You're only really limited there by the species of woods you can get a hold of. So a lot of options as far as that goes. There's also a lot of synthetic options. Here is a neck that has some white plastic material. Also looks really good on a darker fretboard. You can get these in a white, a black, lots of different colors. You can get some pearloid ones. You can get a lot of options for synthetic material. Mother of Pearl is another great option. I don't have a neck on hand that has mother of pearl inlays, but I've used it before and you just use them epoxy and glue those things in there and it works really well and looks awesome too. If you'd like to go the more traditional route, you can use clay inlays like were used traditionally, at least on fender style necks. So I hope that answers some questions that you might have on fret markers. So if there's something you wanna see, leave it in the comments, let me know. I'm always looking for ideas, different things, so I can try to help you guys out along your guitar building journey. So thanks a lot for watching everybody, and we'll see you next time. Uh...